Hello everyone. I've got something pretty special today for anybody who uh, likes and fondly remembers Apple II stuff. Um, if you're not one of those Apple II people who gets really excited by 30-year-old computers with monochrome screens that have a lot of green on them and that have almost no sound capabilities, then this might be kind of boring for you. But if you get really excited about this stuff, as I do, then come along for the ride and let's see uh, what's going on today. So what do we have in stock today? Uh, today I'm showing you a, a very famous, uh, or at least what was a very famous and very popular Apple II program back in the day. It's Design Your Own Railroad. Uh, what really shocks me is that there's no video of it on YouTube that I could find. So back in the day, I mean, Design Your Own Railroad, it was huge. It was... Uh, it, inordinately popular among Apple II users because uh, it, it was just kind of, it was kind of fun. It was very quirky. It was incredibly difficult to use just as computers should be. Uh, nobody really knew what to do with it or how to work it and uh, and it was a lot of fun. So that's really, uh, I mean, isn't that what, what all computers should be? I, I think so. So let's go ahead and start, uh, let's see. I have actually four disks for this. Two are for um, the design your own railroad part and then two or four run your own railroad so there's d-y-o-r-r -R design and then there's r-y-o-r-r -R for run your own railroad i'll go ahead and uh, do them in order i think uh, design disk one is supposed to be where you're supposed to start or maybe not i don't know but anyway let's go ahead and get into this and see what we can uh what we can see i'll go ahead and click this uh apple button up here to boot and there you go there's the title screen design your own railroad so I guess we just press enter here. Okay. Uh, I have to be honest, I don't really know exactly what all the different disks do. Uh, when I had this as a kid, I had just one disk which seemed to do everything. It was it seemed to be design and running all in one, all in one five and a quarter inch floppy. So I think this is a more advanced, actually I'm pretty sure this is a more advanced version of the program than what I had when I was a kid because this is copyrighted for 1990. Uh, and the one I got, I, I definitely got mine before that. I think I got mine in 1986 or something like that. So I must have had an older version that put everything on one disc. Um, and yeah, as you can see, it's by Abracadata, which uh, is also, uh, I guess their other well-known product is called Design Your Own Home. Uh, but it was pretty much just like a CAD program where you could put down things to sort of plan the layout of a house, which I guess is useful, but Design Your Own Railroad appealed because even though it had this sort of surface veneer of CAD legitimacy, of, of being, you know, some kind of computer-aided design program, really people just wanted to play the run the trains part where you can run your trains around the track and crash them into things. So, um... All rights are reserved by Don Fudge. Well, Mr. Fudge, I, I know it's very immature to make fun of people's names, but I think with, uh, with a name like that, you probably should reserve some of your rights, sir. Let's go ahead and press space to continue. Um, the emulator I'm using does allow for two disk images to be loaded at once. Uh, as you can see on the right-hand side there, uh, you do have the option of loading two floppy images, but I'll, I'll keep things simple and just say I have one drive. I'll lie to the emulator or to the program. Uh, please always follow these rules. Always make backup copies of your data disks after each use. Always have at least one initialized data disk handy. Uh, conveniently enough, in the age of emulation, this isn't very difficult to do because you can just copy the uh, the disk image file, and if your disk image gets messed up for whatever reason, you can just restore it from the copy of the disk image that you've made. So, of course, I'm not working with actual physical floppy disks here. Anyway, um... I don't have a printer attached to this emulator, so uh, I'll just go ahead and say no. I don't want to mess with printer formats at this time. All right, so basically, uh, let's go through these in order. I'll go ahead and press 1 for operations. Um, this emulator that I'm using, I believe, can simulate both mouse and a joystick. I'll go ahead and press 2 for paddles, joystick, pad. Yeah, program disk is in drive. I'm only using one disk at a time, so I'm not even really differentiating between what's the uh, the program and the data disk. I, I'm using my program disk as the data disk, I think, which is probably a very bad thing to do if you were doing this in real life, but uh, using emulated disk images, I think it's not that big a deal because, again, if, if the disk gets messed up for whatever reason, I can always just copy it from my original image. So anyway, uh, let's see now. Yeah, okay, and here we are. So we have a menu bar at the top which uses uh, the arrow keys to function, so you can press down to pull down a menu. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the instructions. 
Uh, the operations module is about any transit system that runs on tracks. Trains, trolleys, subways, monorails, etc. This may represent an existing or future model train layout. Or it may represent a simulation of an actual train on its actual route. It's up to you. Well, those are good instructions. I must say, I'm, I'm very glad that I read these instructions because now I know exactly how to use the program. This, this definitely told me a lot about... Uh, it's definitely instructed me in using the program. So then the operations module may be to you a toy, a model train layout that lives in your Apple, or a serious tool for simulation of a particular transit system to be used in experiments, presentations, and as a teaching aid. See the manual for details. I don't think these count as instructions. I think this is more a statement of philosophy. Was that it? That was it. Th th those were the instructions. See, this game was made in an earlier time when that was what counted as instructions. Okay, commands. Let's the run commands. There are none. Oh, here we go. These are the commands. Okay. Um. So. Um, yeah. So the uh, there are switches uh, which we probably won't see in this game, but. Uh, yeah, pressing A through Z or Z will flip the switches back and forth. Well, I don't need to read these. I'm, I'm assuming that you folk can read. Keep cursor off train or it will wreck. However, it is okay to stop the train by putting the cursor in front of it. That's exactly how things work in real life as well. If you want to stop a train in real life, you put a huge cursor in front of it, and of course the train can't go through the cursor. So, Anyway, uh, the painting commands... Um, I have to be honest, I'm probably not going to remember any of these, but that's okay. I'm definitely not definitely not going to remember all of these, or even most of these, or probably any of these at all. Uh, gosh. There's a lot to this program. Uh, let's see, so let's go to the options quickly. If you have no way to do the tryout in the manual, except I can't because I don't have a manual. And if questions come up, or do additional do additional reading in the manual to clarify things. See, this is uh, this is good advice. If questions come up, do additional reading in the manual to clarify things. If you don't know what's going on, RTFM, as we say. Oh, here we go. Here's more information. Um, oh, they even have a note there for uh, Apple II GS users. That's nice. Since I was an Apple II GS user back in the day. All right, um, I guess that's it. That's all the information we're going we're gonna to get. So, of course, you can save and load designs here. You can delete designs. If you go to list, let's see, what do we have in the list? List. That was it. Oh, I guess the disk I have. I guess the disk I have doesn't come with any designs. Uh, what's that nine there? I'm pressing space, and it just keeps showing me this number nine. That's nice. Okay. Is 9 a design? Hold on. Okay, I'll press escape. If I come back here, can I, uh... Can I choose to load... 9? Load. What? Huh? Wasn't it supposed to ask me what? Oh, there we go. Okay. Now I can press return or enter to choose that one. Maybe that will show me something interesting. Wow, now that is pretty awesome. I have to admit that that is pretty hardcore awesome. That's that's better than that that is better than winning nine dollars. I don't know if it's better than winning nine million dollars, but if you had nine million dollars, you could buy a real Apple II and play this on the real Apple II instead of through an emulator, which might be even better. But okay, that's pretty awesome. Okay, I'm glad we did that. I'm I'm very happy with my life now. Uh, I don't know what scan is. Does that um, does that actually use? I, I doubt that that means scan from paper. Uh, that's probably going to mess things up. Looks like it didn't do anything at all. Okay, I'm okay with this. Wait, hello. Do I get do I get my menu back now? What? Okay. I don't know what that did, but that's okay. I don't care. Under Create, what do we have? We have lots of options here. We can create a new layout, which I, I believe just blanks out the screen. Uh, you can put labels on your switches, which we don't have. Oh, actually, we do have. See, see where it says... Oh, if you look on the um, 
in the lower left, see where there's uh, a sort of a diagonal row of six switches and they're labeled A, B, C, D, E, F. So that shows you, um, so you can press A, B, C, D, E, and F to, um, to twiddle those switches back and forth. Um, okay, and you can place cars and move cars, but actually it looks like trains have already been placed on this layout because, uh, yeah, you can see uh, those little white squares that you see. I don't really have anything to point at them with. Cause I don't think I don't think I'm recording my mouse cursor, so I don't think you can see my mouse cursor in this video. But uh, like in the lower left, for example, if you look, um, there's sort of a, a vertical column of six uh, little white squares. That's a train. That's a train with six cars in it, I believe. So let's see. Uh, let's look at the library later. Um, yeah, the, the game comes. Sorry program. It's not a game. This is a serious simulation tool. Uh, the program comes with um, trees and different types of buildings that you can put in, but you can see a lot of them have already been put there in this sample. So let's go ahead and go to run. And if we go, yeah, you can choose to run it silently or with sounds. I'll go ahead and run it with sounds. The sounds in this game are a little bit terrible. Um, some of them, well, mostly they're non-existent. And uh, if you haven't saved currently, I'll do so after pressing escape. That's okay. I don't need to do that. All right, select a train to run. Press mouse pedal button when the cursor is in the car at either end of the string of cars. Okay, let's see. So what you're seeing now is, see that little blinking cursor? That is a, um, that is a, um, that is the cursor that you point with. I think this game, uh, sorry, not program, I think the program is expecting me to use paddles or joysticks because that's what I selected. Uh, I don't have a physical joystick hooked, joystick hooked up to this computer, but if you go here into the um, Apple Win configuration, under input you can actually choose, uh, yeah, right now it defaults to the keyboard and numpad, but if I choose mouse, um, basically, uh, basically this allows you to use the Windows mouse to emulate joystick movement on the Apple II. So let's go ahead and try that. If I do this now, yeah, see, see how it's moving around? Now it's moving around in response to my mouse movements. That's pretty cool. So what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to choose the train to move, right? Let's try moving this train here. Whoa. What happened? Uh, I don't know what happened. Okay. Let's see what happened. Maybe something interesting will happen. No locos. That's right. We no loco here. Uh, oh, that was probably telling me that there are no locomotives associated with the train that I clicked on. Uh, how can you tell if there's a locomotive? I think the locomotives look the same as other train cars, so it's difficult to discern whether there's a, uh, a locomotive hooked up to a train or not, unless I'm just misunderstanding. What's, yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay, let me press escape to get out of this. I'm sorry, I know I'm kind of faffing around here and I don't really know what's uh, what I'm doing, but... All right, let me put in a train then. Uh, can I... Hmm. Okay. I'm not sure what's going on. Obviously, this is going to be just a, a fairly brief overview of the program. This is not going to be a complete tutorial of the program because... Uh, I myself have largely no idea what I'm doing, but okay, let's go ahead and um, look at the library. Hold on. Uh, let me first clear this out. So if I, um, I just realized actually on the, on the right hand side there, there's some kind of a toolbar there. Uh, let's see over, uh, you can't really see, there's not really a cursor on the screen right now, but on the right hand side there, there's a vertical bar of little icons that appear to do something. Let's see, what if I just say, um, delete? Does that clear out the screen? I don't actually want to delete something, but no, escape. I don't want to delete that, I just want to clear out. How do I just clear out the, uh, the existing stuff on the screen? Oh, do I just say create layout? There we go. Add to old loaded layout or start a new layout. So I'll press N for a new layout and that should blank out everything. In theory. Use mouse or paddle for, uh, for, for vertical overpass. Press V before placing the crossing icon. For horizontal overpass, press H beforehand. Okay. Don't know what that means, but that's okay. Nobody cares. All right, here we go. Okay, now the cursor's moving around. So now what I can do is... Um, 
Hmm. This is actually, hold on, how do I get to uh, the next page, or is there indeed a next page? What I'd wanted to do was uh, show some of the uh, stuff from the library. Okay, looks like I can. Okay, here we go. So let's go and start with uh, the trees under the library. And uh, so basically, yeah, press space or mouse or paddle button to place to place the uh, the current shape, and you can press S to load the uh, the shape library. So here we go. So here's the first tree type, and you can move this tree around. And if I click here, for example, uh, it will place that tree there. If I press S on the keyboard, I can see. In theory, yeah, here we go. Here are all the different types of trees that come with the with the program. So if I want to, instead of that huge, uh, very leafy sort of tree that I had there, if I wanted to lay down a small shrub, for example, I could click on that and then just place a... Uh, hello? Oh, do I have to... Hold on, why is that? Oh, there we go. I pressed space. Now we can adjust that using the arrow keys a little bit, uh, but I think I'm done. I'll just press enter or return. There you go, and I can just place these in a uh, in a sort of a row and create a line of uh, a line of shrubs that will bound our our screen. Okay, I'm not going to keep doing that all the way, but you get the idea. And I can place uh, a larger tree. If I press S, I can come back here and choose. Let's choose this big orange tree, which makes it look like it's autumn or fall, if you prefer. There we go. Okay, good enough. Okay, so those are the trees, and let's go on and see what else is available in the library. Um, residential buildings. Again, let's press S. So, well, that's the default residential building, but what else do we have available? If I press S, we see all these. So all of these are the different types of residential buildings you can put down. Uh, I think some of these graphics are, uh, are a little bit taken from Design Your Own Home. But anyway, let's let's try this uh, this big purple house here with the circles in front of it, or maybe behind it. I can't tell. If, I can't tell which part of that is supposed to be the front. Maybe the the little square at the top is like a front porch, which means the bottom is the backyard, and they have some trees growing in the backyard, or vice versa. Maybe it's a back porch, and then the circles represent trees in the front yard. Who knows? It's a mystery. Uh, so let's go ahead and set that down there. Hello, oh, there we go. And let's put a uh, another type of house next to it. This is a uh, a sort of a semicircle on top of a. Actually, what is this supposed to be? Oh, it's probably. Uh, I'm guessing this white semicircle is meant to be a driveway. Maybe. Don't know. I can't really tell. Okay, let's move on. I just want to show all the different shapes that come with the uh, with the program. These are, I guess, industrial buildings. Come on. There we go. These are, yeah, they look very industrial. Actually, they look sort of like vaguely amorphous shapes without any identifiable purpose. Like if you if you just put down this shape, for example, you just picked this and said, hey, I'm going to put this shape right here. I don't think somebody would really verifiably recognize that as an industrial building and say, oh, yeah, that's a factory or a warehouse or whatever it's supposed to be. But anyway, OK, let's move on. And whoops. And let's look at okay, tall building. Yeah, so let's look at tall buildings. Uh, that's a tall building. And if we press S, we can see all the other different types of tall buildings. Uh, I don't think this one is a tall building. That looks like just an empty field, which might have a tall building added to it later. But yeah, we can put a uh, let's put this big sort of rectangular donut tall building here. It's pretty awesome. All right, uh, roads, do they have a whole library of shapes for roads? I guess they do. Let's see. Well, these are fairly generic looking. Also, this is not a road, that's a parking lot. But that's okay, we can put a parking lot next to the this house with a driveway so that it becomes more like a hotel or something, I guess. Okay, um, moving on, let's look at what's under miscellaneous. I believe that's what MISC is meant to stand for. What is that? Poland? Um, it's probably meant to be some kind of body of water. Yeah, I guess these purple things are supposed to be water. 
because, you know, this program exists in a parallel universe where water is purple, just like, uh, purple rain, purple rain. All right, let's go ahead and, I guess this is a basketball court, and that's probably, is that a tennis court or something? I don't know, I'm not even sure. This, this is so miscellaneous, I can't choose from all these different miscellaneous things. Let's go ahead and put a helicopter here, flying on top of this building. Yes, excellent. Excellent design choice, I'm sure. Okay, uh, go to vehicles, and let's see what, he ha what do we have under vehicles. I'm going to assume some vehicles. Yes, indeed, these are vehicles. So at the top we have, I guess, a car, just a standard car. The second row features a uh, tractor-trailer sort of truck, like an 18-wheeler. Uh, the third row is probably a bus, and the fourth row appears to be a motorcycle. So let's go ahead and put a uh, truck that is about to crash into this building with the helicopter hovering over it, because why not? Okay, well, that was exciting. That's certainly... Uh, that certainly uh, made my day. All right, and finally, let's look at what we have for stores. Um, is that a store? Let's see, what do we have under stores? Uh, I guess the parts at the bottom could conceivably be some kind of buildings. I have to confess that two items in the upper left don't really look like stores. They look more like some sort of device or appliance. They look like the control panel for a tape deck or something like that. I don't know. Let's uh, okay, let's go ahead and put down this uh, this one building here, which looks kind of like a pop tart. There we go. That's nice. Okay, that's enough of that. I just wanted to show off all the different types of uh, types of graphics. So basically, you can uh, use all these different graphics that come with the game to build little cities and things like that. But that's all just cosmetic. That just makes it look nice. It has, as far as I know, it has no function in the program. Uh, you can put down switches and destinations and color fills and things like that. Um, I think those are fairly self-explanatory. I'm not going to bother with those too much. And then, of course, saving and loading things. So I guess that's it. That's the first disc of Design Your Own Railroad. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the second disc here. Let's see what that does. Uh, this is just asking, are you sure you want to reboot? I'll say yes. And let's see what the second disc does for us. Uh, the title screen is exactly the same, I believe. I'll go ahead and say I have one drive. Oh, this is the CAD side. Okay. Let's see. Um, do, 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 do. do I have an Apple printer? No, I do not. Uh, but it still asks me if I want to install a printer format, even though I don't have a printer. Okay, mouse or paddles. I'll say paddles, because I believe the mouse emulation that I'm using emulates paddles. Be sure program disk is in drive, and, ooh, choose your scale. Um, well, I like fish scales. Actually, I don't, I don't really, I don't really like or dislike fish scales, I'm kind of indifferent to them. Um, I honestly have no idea what these scales are supposed to mean. Is that, uh, I don't know, let's just choose the first one, let's choose the, whoa, choose an area size. Um, I have no idea. I'll choose the first one again. I don't really know how big that's supposed to be or how small it's supposed to be. All right, here we go. So, um, first few menus, look, the first couple of menus look similar. Then there's uh, tools. Yeah, this is uh, well. I get again, it's sort of CAD stuff, so I guess it's not surprising that there are some CAD-like tools here. Uh, so we can draw, we can make curves, and we can put down text. Let's be uh, really wild and crazy and make a circle, because all cool people make circles. So let's see, if I come back here with my mouse, yeah, I can choose to put a circle there. And yeah, as I'm moving the mouse, that makes the circle larger or smaller. Let's go ahead and make a circle that's, I guess that's a reasonable size for a circle. And let's put a circle over here, which is somewhat larger in size because we're just wild and crazy people like that. Wait, how do I? There we go. There we go. That's a somewhat larger circle. All right, there you go. So it's it's CAD. It's a CAD program. It's definitely more advanced than, uh, than any other CAD program on the market. Uh, so there you go. If that kind of thing is entertaining for you, then uh, I hope that uh, that made your day. All right, let's move on to... Um, 
run your own train, the uh, first image here, let's go ahead and boot with that. Yes, let's reboot. And now, uh, oh dear, this disk appears to have been interfered with by uh, by some folks who um, who have uh, illegitimately put their put their names on it. Oh well, that's okay. They, uh, I'm sure they did some kind of useful work. Wow, that's a pretty awesome animation. I have to say, that's that's quite a uh, that is quite the animation for uh, for an Apple II. Of course, it has no sound accompanying it, but that's. Uh, that's actually probably for the better because the Apple II generally has rather poor sound capabilities, but the graphics are nice, even though even if they do exhibit that sort of uh, unique ability to, dis to display only green and purple that the Apple II usually had. Uh, well, it's not only green and purple, of course. It's It's got orange and green and other stuff as well, but the color palette for the Apple II is fairly standard and a little bit, a uh, little bit, uh, well, it's distinctive. I'll give that. I'll give it that much. So yes, yeah, this is from 1987. So I guess this is an older version of the program. Uh, let's go ahead and press space to continue. Uh, I'll say I have one drive. Yes, please al always follow these rules. Okay. So if I press one, we can. Uh, let's see. Why don't I do the tutorial first? I'll press three for tutorial. And run your own train. It's like a flight simulator, except you're not in the air. You're in a train engine, and instead of being a pilot. Um, I apologize. I, I know that this co the color scheme here makes this text rather painful to read, but I'm not actually going to read all this out loud. I'll just go ahead and skip through this. You folks can pause the uh, the video and read this if you'd like, even though I know that doing so is going to be quite uh, quite excruciating with these colors. Uh, so it consists of t uh, the program consists of two parts: design layout and run your train. The f pretty self-explanatory. The first is for designing. The design part lets you design, and then uh, the run part lets you run. Yes, that was that's pretty uh, pretty tricky. So yeah, so design lets you basically create the uh, the the world. That's that's kind of the the CAD thing. Um, although I don't think this is advanced as that CAD part that we were just looking at. This is basically where you can put down little graphics. You can put down the trees and such, and uh, and the tracks and everything. And then um, yeah. Oh, and you can. I believe you can also load freight. It, it, the program gives you the option of actually loading and unloading freight if you have a freight train and want to transport it around and be really cool and awesome like that. Uh, so, so it's a lot of text here. The Runaway Train Game. For those of you who like fast action games. Um, Oh, this is not design your own train. This is run your own trains. So this is basically, I guess, a stripped down version of it. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Here we go. We're back to the beginning now. All right. So that was nice. That was a good tutorial. Uh, I'd kind of hope that maybe the tutorial would actually show you how to do something and just containing 20 screens of text, but that's okay. I'll go ahead and press one to design something. And oh, I can use the keyboard here. The keyboard is a good fallback if you have nothing else but it, uh, it requires using the cursor keys to move around, and since the simulator so nicely does mouse emulation for the joystick, uh, or for, for the paddles, I'll go ahead and press 2 to emulate, uh, to use mouse paddle emulation. Remember when computers had paddles? That was a long time ago. They don't really have paddles today, do they? All right, so let's see. Uh, so info, let's take a look at the uh, instructions. If you haven't already, do the tryout in the manual. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's definitely very, uh, that was definitely very useful instructions. All right, here are the commands. Okay, so these are the basic commands for when you're actually playing the uh, the kind of gamey portion part of the program. So pressing one through four will stop and start the train with that number. Uh, obviously pressing zero starts and stops all the trains at once. Forward slash and the number reverses the direction of the train. Uh, two forward slashes reverses all trains. And you can use the left and right arrow keys and then one through four to change the speed and A through Z or Z flips the switch and I guess pressing question mark shows this. That's nice. Okay, and do we have any options? Um, oh, here, now under options it shows us the text that formerly was under instructions. This is not actually... 
that wasn't actually options. So usually today when a program says, when a program gives you an option or a command called options that actually lets you set something, but here you can't actually set anything. Options is just basically sort of a philosophical blurb about how you can do all kinds of different things with the program, so. Different times, different times. Okay, let's go ahead and, oh, you can, you can whistle. Um, I believe this is the worst sound in the world, so those of you who are headphone users might want to take a bit of caution right now because I'm going to try this option. It, I, it plays something that's supposed to sound like a train whistle, but it sounds more like somebody uh, who's sort of... I guess it sounds kind of like a train whistle if there were about 500 million cats inside the smokestack of the train coming out through the whistle um, orifice or whatever. So it's, it's, not exactly, it's not exactly the softest sound that you've ever heard. Okay, I'll go ahead and play it now. I'm not sure how well that'll come through in the video. I, I tried to turn down the volume on this program, so that might not be as impressive as uh, as it could have been. Anyway, um, so yeah, I guess the only option here is to, well, yeah, let's uh, create, create a layout first and then we'll run something. Uh, so I'll press N to start a new layout, even though I think there was no old layout loaded anyway, so it wouldn't have made much difference, but okay, let's go. All right, here we go. So we've seen this interface before. This is where I can basically click on something on the right here and then place it on the left. So I'll go ahead and do the simplest layout possible, pretty much, which is basically just uh, an oval. So I'll go ahead and, oops. I will go ahead and just put a bunch of track segments in a row here. And this is a little bit clunky just because of the, uh, it's a little bit slow. Not quite, can't quite tell when it's gonna update or what, but okay. Let's go ahead and, whoops. Well, that's okay. We can be a bit, uh, we can be a bit sloppy here because if there are any extraneous track segments, the train is just, the train just won't run on those. So that doesn't really matter. I think if I come down to this black square down here and click on that, I think that lets me delete these. Yeah, that lets me delete any any misclicks, but I don't think it really matters because, uh, yeah, if those track segments just stay there, they just won't do anything. Okay, uh, so that's that, and let's go ahead and put the corners on. So this is a corner there. We'll need one of each, of course, because there are four different types of corners. So there's one of that corner type, one of these, and one of those. All right. And now I'll just put down the uh, the vertical segments. This is a, um, I know it looks kind of like the uh, the Iron Cross, but it's just a, um, it's obviously a um, a four way kind of crossroads for when you, a vertical track intersects with a horizontal track. And there's other stuff like this is a, uh, I believe that's a switch. It's kind of hard to tell, but I believe that's a switch that allows trains coming from either from the bottom or from the right side to go to the uh, to the left, and vice versa. If a train's coming from the left, it can go straight to the right, or it can be diverted by the switch down to that little track segment at the bottom. Um, I'm not sure what this is supposed to be. Is that just an obstacle? If the train hits that. If the train hits that, it just crashes. I don't know. Probably. All right, so let's go ahead and finish off what we're doing here by putting these vertical segments on. Whoops. That's okay, I'm gonna ignore that because I'm a lazy slob. All right, there we go, there's our track. So let's go ahead and uh, press escape and I can say label switches, but I don't really care. Let's go ahead and run. And I think manual means not like a, an instruction manual, but run the run the track manually, as in not automatically. Uh, the speed, what speed do we want? Let's go ahead and... Um, I'll go ahead and choose a speed of 20. Speeds are quite relative here because, uh, of course, this is an emulator and you can actually uh, quite drastically change the effective speed by changing the speed on the emulator. But I'll go ahead and start with something pretty slow, like 20. I think that's reasonable. Uh, let's start with just one train and keep things simple. Okay, what train is it? Uh, I'm sorry, what direction is the train traveling in? Um, let's go ahead and start the train headed east. Why not? I'll just say because that seems logical because we read from right. Uh, sorry, from left to right, so I'll just go ahead and start the train in the uh, top left corner and have it head towards the right as if it were a line on a page. 
that we're reading. So I'll press 3 for east. Number of cars in train, 1 through 4, I'll say 4. Speed of train, slow, medium, or fast? Um, let's go ahead and make it a medium speed train, why not? Okay, put cursor on starting place for train caboose and press space to place trains 1 through 4 in that order. Trains will depart when you're done. All right, I'll go ahead and put the cursor right here. Press space. There we go, and the train showed up. Okay, oh, and this is very helpfully showing us the uh, the commands again, just in case we forgot. Okay, I'll go ahead and press space. And, oh, hey, there, there it goes. The train is moving. Uh, that is indeed moving quite slowly. Uh, why don't I go ahead and... Hold on, let me go ahead and come here and crank up the speed on the emulator somewhat. It is going a little bit faster now, but it's still pretty slow. All right, let's just set this to the fastest. There we go. Now it's that train's going around pretty fast, and you can see the minutes on the right are transpiring. So, uh, you may recall that uh, pressing the number of the train will start and stop the train. So if I press 1 on the keyboard here, the train stops, and I press it again, it starts again. And similarly, pressing forward slash 1 will get the train going in the opposite direction. And you might recall we can press slash slash to immediately re reverse the direction of all trains, which only applies to the one train that we have right now. Uh, I guess that's it. Uh, you can do other wacky stuff like... Um, hold on, if I press A, that doesn't do anything. I don't think... I think that thing that I put down is a switch. But hold on, let me see quickly. So if I say label switches... Um, use A through Z or Z to label switches. So... Let's see, hold on, how do I... Oh, there we go. Okay. Can I press A while on top of this? Okay, it did something. Oh, I see, I needed to. Okay. That put down a letter A, but it, yeah, I need to actually mark the switch now. There we go. That looks pretty ugly, I have to admit. But if I run this now, uh, let's go ahead and choose 99 to make it really incredibly fast. Uh, let's go ahead and put the train down here. Wow, the train's going pretty quickly. Um, okay, but if I press A, yeah, you can kind of, it's actually kind of hard to see. Whoops, whoa, what happened? Uh, I didn't see what happened. Gosh. So let's, uh, let's quickly... I'll press O to add to the existing layout. Let's put down another switch, because I just want to show what uh, what switches can do. So let's do this. Let's put a switch... Um, let's put down one of these, actually. And I'll put that right there. There we go. That will then allow the train to uh, come around. So Okay. Now if I say label switches, this will be switch B. So I'll press B here to place a letter B. Uh, there. Okay, good. Now I put down a letter B. Looks kind of like a number six, but that's okay. And now if I press spacebar on top of that switch. Good. Now that switch is switch B. Let's go ahead and run the train again. And I'll go ahead and run it at a speed of, uh, let's say, 10, because my emulator is so fast that actually that'll more than make up for the speed difference. And let's go ahead and uh, put down the train. And I'll go ahead and put the train here as it was before. Okay, that's nice. And if I press B, see how the switch moves? So right now the train is going straight through the switch, but if I leave it like this now, whoa, the train actually ran off the tracks and plowed into the sidebar on the side that's showing how many trains there are and how many minutes have occurred. Well, that was pretty awesome. Uh, okay, well, I'm surprised it didn't crash. Let's try one further thing then. Let's go ahead and um, let's try setting down four trains. And let's have them all let's have them all running eastward, why not? With four cars in them. And I'll say they're all running slow. Okay, so here we go. So here's one train, here's another train, here's another train. And here's one more. And I bet we're going to see a collision. 
Actually, that went too quickly for, for us to even see the collision, but I believe that that point on the right-hand side where the trains, where the two trains meet, is intended to be a collision, and there's a little bit of debris that's scattered out from the collision site. Um, I guess that's it. I guess that's all I'm going to show, because actually designing and creating something much larger and more significant than that would obviously take a lot of time, and I've already been talking for, I'm actually just coming up in 40 minutes here, so I don't want to go too much longer than that. Let's go ahead and quickly, uh, oh, I didn't do any loads. What a shame, I really wanted to drop my loads. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and very quickly show the last run your own train disk here. Reboot the emulator one more time, and let's see, what does this do? That doesn't appear to do anything at all. Hmm, okay. Well, that's fine, be that way. Uh, I want to also show one other thing because I think there was some way to get a, um, a screen where you can, uh, Let's see, if I press 2 here to run your train, hold on, let me get the emulator back to a fairly realistic speed again. If I press 2 here to run your train, I think it shows you some sort of a pseudo first person view. It's not actually first person, but yeah, here we go. I don't think that you can actually do anything from here. It looks like you might actually be able to, but I think that if you press R to run, it'll just take you to the top-down bird's eye view that we saw before, so I have no idea what this, what the purpose of this is, or if it even lets you do anything. Although if you press H, it does let you blow the horn, and once again, I'm going to do that, so once again, those of you using headphones may want to uh, run, uh, run across the street for a moment. Okay, I'll go ahead and press it now. I guess that wasn't as bad as it could have been. The first time I tried that, I, I had my volume turned up quite significantly, and it sounded like... Uh, it really didn't sound like a horn blowing. It sounded more like... Um, I don't even know what to compare it to. It, it, it sounded sort of like... Uh, kind of like white noise, except not pleasant like white noise, so maybe like black noise. Sort of like what white noise would be if it were black metal or death metal or something like that, so... I guess that's not too bad. Uh, I guess that's it then. That is all I'll show of design your own railroad and run your own railroad or run your own train. Actually, I guess it's run your own train, so R-Y-O-T, not R-Y-O-R. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this, uh, like I said, this was really exciting back in the day, back when uh, when Apple II was still all the rage. This this milkshake brought all the boys to the yard. This was, uh, this was really exciting. This was uh, quite special for some people to be able to make these little... It, it was basically model trains. It, it was... it had the same appeal of model trains, except that it didn't cost anything because... well, you had to pay for the program in theory, but software piracy... The, the nice thing about stealing something is it makes expensive things free. So, uh, that was also something that... Would, uh, by the way, I'm not endorsing that. If anybody took that as an encouragement for me to steal anything or pirate any software, it certainly was not. I'm just pointing out that uh, stealing is a technology which reduces the price of consumer goods and services, but uh, in no way would I endorse or encourage anyone uh, to do so. But anyway, what I was saying was that uh, this was like model trains, except you didn't have to pay for it if you, unless you unless you did unless you bought it, and. Uh, and you could just make stuff and crash trains into each other and just keep doing it over and over again. So, yeah. That's it. That was uh, design your own railroad and run your own train. I hope you folks have enjoyed. Uh, for some of you, this might bring back, bring back some memories. Um, I think for most of you, this probably will just seem like some sad old man getting really excited about his model trains from 30 years ago, but... Uh, well, I guess that's kind of what it is, isn't it? Um, so yeah, I'll go and stop here. Thank you for watching, everyone, and I will uh, talk to you folks later. Bye-bye for now.